Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome back to 10,000 and Below, where I go to BoardGameGeek.com, which is the biggest database on board games in the world, and I'm looking at games that are ranked 10,000 and below. Today I'm taking a look at 10,101 to 10,200. Now, uh, this is kind of an off-the-cuff type thing. I'm going to look at these games. I haven't done much prepping ahead of time. Uh, I'm just going to look at them, and I will, some of them I know about, and I'll tell you what I think of them. Other ones, I'm just guessing, and we'll look at them together. So let's take a look here. So you can see the first one here is a war game, Ardeny 1944, with actually quite a few voters. But the second one's Linkage. Linkage was the last one we talked about last time, which, again, these numbers consistently shift. And so it's, this is going to happen as time goes by. What else can we do about it? But I always take a look at the first and the last one. So Ardeny 1944, this is a war game. And you can see it has its typical counters here. And whew, that's a pretty map for sure. but. 2004 edition of this game. All right. All right, let's go to ones that I might know. There's a lot of war games on this list. Look, End of the Iron Dream, Night Drop 2, Pegasus Bridge, Prairie Railroads. That's probably about things. Ooh, there's one. Creeper. Now, this sounds like a scary game, but actually, I'm wondering if I've played this one. So this is from a company called Pin International. Pin International was actually based out of Thailand. They made uh, wooden games there. For a while, they were distributed by Out of the Box Publishing. Well, if I haven't played this game, I definitely was shown how to play it. It has these pins that you are sticking in and from Pin International. And I believe you're trying to make uh, something that goes across the board, maybe? This is an older version from Graham's Games. So I guess it came out before the Pin International version did. But it's a really pretty game. All their games are really, really nice. And if you see there on the box itself, one of the interesting things about their games was you could actually stack them all on top of each other. So cool. Creeper. Creeper. All right. We got Nor Drakenberg Legend. And this is 246. Um, I'm probably saying this incorrectly. This came out in 2002. It looks like a dungeon crawl of sorts. Huh. I'm assuming this never came out in English. Oh, that guy's in trouble. There's an orc coming up behind him. It looks a lot like some of the game's workshop style games. Cool. Alrighty, gyrating hamsters. Oh, great. What the food? Okay, so what the food here is a game about, it's a basically a food fight. And uh, I played this game, and it's more like a silly game where you're going to target other people with actions. But you pick your actions. So you can see action here, throw, pick, duck, eat. Um, and you're trying to throw different types of food at each other and try to outthink the other players, kind of like a rock, paper, scissors style aspect to it. Then we have Campus Cafe. Now, this game, I really like the theme of it. Essentially, you're a barista in this game, and you're delivering... Uh, different coffees and drinks to people who need them. Unfortunately, it probably has a few too many pieces for it, overall for it to be good. I like the game. The company is one that you probably haven't heard of. This was, I think, one of the first games that they did. But it has really cool pieces. It has a big board. The rules aren't written well. And it's just not that well known. But it could be uh, a, kind of a nice streamlined game there. Um, then we have... Death in the Trenches, Zarkana, Cake Duel. Well, Cake Duel is another uh, game here that I've played. I really like this one. Really nice components. And it doesn't have many ratings here. I believe this was a, a, a Kickstarter game. And you can see it has these acrylic pieces here. This is another one where you're trying to play a card and outthink the other person. Another rock, paper, scissors style game. So there's some of the pieces of the game. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I like Cake Duel a lot. Um, a great two-player game. Key West. Oh, there's a Key Largo game. That's a Key West. I'm actually a little interested in this one. Let's see here. Key West. Oh. oh it looks like a, a Euro-style game here with different pieces. 
collecting fruits and stuff. Meh, it looks okay. When did this game come out? 2010, so 10 years ago. Publisher, Horse Rocket, what else have they done? I don't recognize their stuff. A Tandera. Okay, well, not much. Maybe, I don't even know if they're in business anymore. V Venesia. So this game here, about pigeons. This one looks actually pretty interesting. I like the grid. I'm, I'm definitely a sucker for grids on boards. Huh, so what do we know about this game here? It was Oh, it's from Queen Games. This came out in 2001. So this has been a bit since this one has come out. And now we're back on a normal page here. Come on, this is an abstract strategy game. Uh, from Blue Orange Games, a version of this here from Bruno Catala. Well, this is kind of uh, a low for Bruno Catala, isn't it? It's a nice board there. Oh, definitely Blue Orange. You can see the little lizard there. Huh. Well, I've not played this one. I wonder if Z has played this one. It came out in 2008, and it's Bruno Catala, so he tends to like his stuff. Very abstract uh, style looking game there. Alrighty, Summer Lightning, Invasion of Poland, Park Park Baseball, or Borrow Park Baseball, Ruining Cards, Rome at War 3, Queen of the Celts. I suppose are the first two Rome at Wars. Aztec, that's a cool looking box. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, that's neat. Ooh, I really like how this one looks. It's an abstract game that definitely looks homemade. Well, go figure. Ah, there's the actual game itself, I guess, when it's... That's a really pretty game. I really like how this one looks. That's, this is from Zach Verlag, but I'm not seeing the actual box of it. I'm always seeing, it's interesting, the one here that they show in the picture, 1995. Uh, let's see here. It was re-released, winning a special Spiel des Jahres Award for its appearance in that year. Uh, it goes to show you that getting a special Spiel des Jahres does not make you go very high in the rankings. Huh. Alrighty, let's see. Gangs of Mega City 1, that came out in 2005. Here's one that has 186 ratings. Der Ritter von der Hassel, Hasselnuss. This is a squirrel style game from Klaus Teuber. Klaus Teuber is a designer of Settlers of Catan. Well, I really like the pieces for this one. Hmm. All right, looks good. That would be an interesting one from Gold Seber, but this, oh, this is a, it's an interesting box, but uh, we'd have to wait and see. Uh, I guess it's never gonna come out in English, probably, if it came out in 1996. But Klaus Teuber, the, the power of his name at that point in time. Forwarder of Xanandu, I saw that one. It's a pretty looking game. Fireworks, this is a game from Renegade Games. Uh, I think we have, I don't know, I, I don't think we ever actually got this one. This is kind of, a the follow-up to lanterns i want to say although I'm, I'm i'm not seeing renegade from this picture maybe renegade picked this up from another company you're right okay aza chen here maybe this is coming out this year from from renegade either way i like the idea of fireworks it's a cool looking theme sign of the peg and it evil below that's a it game flying circus apba pro football there's Talisman Kingdom Hearts. This is from The Op, a new version of Talisman based on the very popular Kingdom Hearts property. My Rummy 111, Seven Card Slugfest. All right, well, Seven Card Slugfest is a game from Level 99 Games. It is set in the same universe that have a lot of things, and this one you are playing down cards as fast as you can on different piles. It's a very entertaining game, in my opinion. This is not one I think that's got a lot of uh, buzz, but I just like the idea. Each, you know, you're, it's a kind of a bar brawl, and you have these different punches and different things that you're going to do, and you're playing them down as quickly as you can. And every character is slightly different. And you know, since it's level 99, they made a gazillion characters. Veld Railroads, Kamisato Schnupperspiel. So I like Kamisato a lot. Uh, this is their. Little little game, a six by six, mini Kamisato. You can see here it compared to the 
the big board of Kamisato, which is a really gorgeous looking thing. I like Kamisato a lot. Having a little mini version is not a bad thing. Uh, wow, here's one I haven't thought about for a long time. The mother load of Sticky Gulch, which sounds way worse than the game actually is. This is from St Scott Starkey, the designer and the artist. So let's take a look at what else Scott Starkey has done. Nope, that's pretty much it. But he's very much involved in the uh, board game uh, online things. In fact, I interviewed him. You can see the interview here. But he's done a lot of uh, art here. The Nacho Incident, the Penguin Ultimatum, Restaurant Row, What's It To You. Now, he hasn't done anything in a long time that I can see. Most of his stuff is older games. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this was a fun little card game. It's been a really long time since I played it, so I don't know uh, what I would think about it now. It's just a small little card game. But I remember thinking it was a pretty neat game for how small it was. Double or Nothing. All right, so... Here we have Double or Nothing. This is from Reiner Knizia, 491 ratings, which considering it has that many ratings, it's a little lower on the list maybe than it should be, but it sure looks, wow. Looks like he played cards and then played a few popular games. Wow, it doesn't look very good, but probably got mass market appeal. Probably sold a ton of them. Hey, here's a Magic Gathering dual decks. I didn't know these were on Board Game Geek as separate entries. And then we have Trexo. I rated this one a 6.5. This was five years ago. Oh, I remember this one. All these uh, pieces are domino pieces with X's and O's on them, and you place them so you're helping your opponent and yourself at the same time trying to get four in a row. A very simple concept, but I thought it worked well. Now, here we have Cluato Super Sleuth. Um... So, uh, let's see here. We, wow, this is a big giant version of Clue. Uh, we have uh, a big giant board here with events and items. I don't think I would want to play this regular than, more than Clue, but I guess if you want Clue on a high level end, there you go. All right, Spyfall Time Travel. This is the newest version of Spyfall. I wonder why this one, this one's not out yet. That's why it hasn't got much buzz. This is basically Spyfall 3. I think it's coming out this year. All right, then we got Raymaster. Oh, yeah. This one, I think I've seen this game for sure. Yeah, this is from ABBA Games. Yeah, it looks okay. Has some dice here. Ooh, I do like that little dice catapult thing that's there. Let's see, Bullseye, Bali, Battle for Paternia, Runes, Dark Age, Nature of the Beast, Prairie vs. Polar. Nature of the Beast is an interesting game. It's a 9x9 nine nine grid where you are fighting animals against each other. And it looks like this here. Let me see if this image pulls up. Yeah, and you each have your 9x9 nine nine grid. And then you just had different groups of animals. And so this one was with prairie animals and polar animals fighting against each other. These guys were really big. They were very enthusiastic when they came out. Uh, they've kind of disappeared off the face of things. Uh, they would be prime uh, candidates for Kickstarter at this point in time. In fact, this one, they may have Kickstarted one of the last ones. I'm not sure. Ahoy, the gothic game Viking Gods, a mighty fortress. Katak, number one. Katak, number one, as opposed to number two. Demon World, Bag the Hun, Chicago Stock Exchange. Talk about the most boring name you can give a game. The War Grants Gamble. You'll see a lot of these different uh, war games on the list. Sly Dice. So Sly Dice is a really interesting concept. This is from Brain Games. I like Brain Games a lot. But this one, you're just trying to get dice combinations, and you can also bluff. But at the end of the day, yeah, I just found it to be a little too lucky. But it has some nice components, and I do like the Fox logo that it has. Joke or Rummy. This is from 1986. It has 167 record. Woo, look at that box, baby. Joke or Rummy. So they mixed the two words there. Fantastic. And here we have cards. It looks like just kind of a game that would be sold in the mass market store. Ooh, Pacru. First of all, I'm going to look at Caldera. Like neat looking abstract game. Oh, this is from Kristen Looney, one of their. Pyramid games. All right, anyway, Pacru. Pacru came in a set um, when you bought it. 
I believe it was called Pakru, Akru, and Azakru, or something like that. And each of these, the board looked like this here, and you were moving these arrows around on the board, dropping things behind you, kind of like Pac-Man. And so this is what the board looked like with different colors. It was a pretty good uh, game. I have to go back and look at my notes. I can't remember which of the three games was the best, if it was Pakru, Azakru, or whatever. Shakru, I think, was the third one. Pocket Dungeon, 2009. Pank. Oh, Pank is a roll and write game. I just reviewed this, I guess, a couple years ago from Cranio Creations. And it's okay, but it's really, really, really bad graphic design. This does not look good at all. 1843, Crimea, Roll and Bump. Green, the golf card game. Well, I played that one, so let's see. Oh, yeah. Just a bunch of cards, and you flip them over at different times. I think I'm one. There's not many pictures here. Only 13 people have commented on this. I'd have to actually go back, probably, and watch my review to remember what this game is about. 2016, so four years ago. Color Pop. Uh, I remember Color Pop. It was almost a good game. It looks, I, I mean, I really like this board here where you're dropping these discs in. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's one of those games that would be better as an app than it is as a board game. All Things Zombie Reloaded. Yay! Oh, I got to see what yay is about. It's from Norris Spiel. You roll three dice in a grid. You write the sum of the dice. 2012. In either field they touch, provide your opponent is not... Oh, that's interesting. So you roll the dice and then write things where they land? Wow, there's not, there's not many. Well, that's an interesting concept, right? You roll the dice, and then you write the total in one of the boxes they land, and you're fighting your opponent. It sounds like a made-up game, but I like it. All right, then we got Scurvy Musketeers of the Spanish Main, the Powerpuff Girls saving the world before bedtime with 202. Yep, Powerpuff Girls. I'm pretty sure Eric has probably played this one and enjoyed it. Uh, Kodama 3D, which has not really taken off. Maybe it's not out yet. Yeah, it says 2020. After Nova. Hey, it's a little card game. I really enjoyed this. I just reviewed this a few weeks ago. I like the art. It's kind of like a Ticket to Ride card game, if that makes sense, with some cool um, aspects to it. So that's a neat one. And then the last one here, Hitler's Last Gamble, which is going to make for an interesting YouTube title with the word Hitler in it. But this is a... Another big uh, board game, a war game. Oh, that's a map. So I'm guessing this is maybe the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, it is. Okay. Alrighty, well, there you go. Folks, that's 100 more games that are ranked at 10,000 or below that we kind of quickly looked at. Anything in there that you think is fantastic or should be talked about, mention it in the comments. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.